What's up, everybody? It's your host, Chris Luminati, and welcome to another episode of Not About Wrestling, the only interview show where I talk with the biggest names in professional wrestling about everything except professional wrestling. On the show today, I'm talking to Shaw Guerrero, a member of the legendary Guerrero family. Shaw has done just about everything in the business. She's wrestled for FCW, WWE, NXT, and served as a ring announcer for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Women's Tag Team Cup Tournament. When she's not performing in the ring, she's working with the burlesque dance group, the Vaudettes. In this episode, Shaw and I discuss growing up the daughter of two legends in the business, Eddie and Vicky Guerrero, how she transitions back and forth from wrestler to ring announcer, her dabbling in witchcraft, her love of animals, she's got four cats and a dog, and her competitive rivalry with her husband on their Twitch channels. And now, entering the ring, hailing from Chicago, Illinois, this is Shaw Guerrero. Welcome to another episode of Not About Wrestling. I am here with Shaw Guerrero. Shaw, how are you? I am awesome. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, anytime. I love, we were just talking about your little setup there. Now, are the pumpkins always there or did you do that just festively now? How did that work? So actually I did do it festively now, but so these shelves, these shelves are new for our Twitch channel. My husband and I, we have our individual Twitch channels. Mm -hmm. And so he usually has bourbon up here. Um, Totoro always stays, but um, <laughs> he usually has something like that. Me, I kind of have my spooky stuff. I'm going to start having like my, my spooky stuff. I'll move my crystal ball here eventually. And yeah, have a little bit of fun with that. It's kind of funny how uh, a lot of the people that I've talked to, um, Everybody has to set up their own like home studio now. Like as you can yeah. see, this is my home studio kind of thing. It's and I just, love it by the way. I'm digging it. <laughs> thanks. And you can kind of see if you can look while well, my wrestlers are in the back and all yes. my like pictures are back there. Um, but like everyone it. has to have their own little home studio for interviews, for Twitch now. Like I don't think people really thought about that before. Literally, the pandemic changed everything. <laughs> Yeah. Like, um, my, like, that's like, we got on Twitch, like my husband was on Twitch, right, kind of, um, right as the pandemic was starting. But then like, I didn't do any of this until we were like deep into pandemic. And yeah, it's just kind of a necessity now. Yeah, I mean, you have to. Uh, I like it as a interviewer and a writer, because it's much easier to get people now. So really, you, you found that like, people are just more willing to oh, like, yeah. get on here. Well, they're more willing to get on. Uh, they have something set up like you do, like people have the place to do it. Uh, they know how to get onto Zoom, like everything is easier yeah. now. They've done Zoom, they do Zoom for work sometimes. Like, you know, oh, they, yeah. have to, they have to learn all that. So it's a little bit more, it's not like, you know, you guys are on the road constantly and to sit down and do something like this, you don't know all the time where you're going to be. Right. You don't know if there's going to be an internet connection. You don't, mm -hmm. God knows, you, you don't know, you don't want to try to get on Zoom or like, but like a lot of people like just, it's there. They've done it a million times. Well, that is like, and when you're doing an interview on the road, like you have to not only find an interconnection, but internet connection, but you have to try and find like a decent background that you yeah. kind of look like semi-professional and whatnot. But I hear you. And I've kind of, I've, I've actually really em embraced Zoom because I actually had to teach dance classes via Zoom for a while. And like, at first it was just like, so stressful trying to like manage like 20 people in one classroom but like now i feel like zoom i've got a little bit like i'm still trying to figure out like how to attach a better microphone attach a better camera and all that but we'll figure it out hopefully hopefully down the line i'll get it down pat <laughs> walk me through a dance performance on zoom or a dance class on zoom how does that work oh man okay so uh like there's a lot of like um, I guess prep work before you even get on there, like getting your students and making sure like everybody knows what to expect, making sure that they like, I would teach like floor work a lot of times. And so I have to make sure all my students like have enough space in their house to even do the choreography I'm doing. And then I have to usually like change choreography on the fly for the student that has a couch in the middle of their dance floor. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know what, like once you get everybody on and God willing, you have a good internet connection. It goes pretty smoothly. Like you kind of take control of the meeting 
um, or hopefully your students understand like I'm the teacher like try not to interject too much that way everybody can get a good amount of learning time in mm -hmm. but uh, I mean yeah it, it kind of depends on the class like how easy it gets but it, it was doable it was a little stressful like normally when you're teaching a dance class you're able to feed off the energy of your students and you're having fun with zoom it just feels really weird because you're just in the middle of your house like <laughs> yeah. know. and there's other things there's going dancing. on in and you said you have a lot of animals, right? You have four, uh, four do, cats and a dog. I do have four cats and a dog, and they would love to make appearances, especially where I'm in the middle of choreography, mm -hmm. um, trying to teach. Trying to teach. Uh, although my students loved it, they were like, "Oh, look, a cat! Is that the same <laughs> cat? Oh, look, another cat!" So, yeah. yeah. I, I found so I have a cat, and uh, I found that he doesn't give a crap about me for the entire day. And then once <laughs> I'm at a computer talking to someone, he's like, oh, yeah. he needs constant attention. Oh, uh, they love to do that, don't they? They they pick the opportune time to yes. uh, to interject. Yeah. Uh, usually, my cat is right when I'm in the middle of like a game, like a video game and whatnot. They like to decide. Oh, now I'm going to sit on top of your arms and <laughs> on the controller. So, <laughs> do, do the four of them fight for your attention sometimes? You know what? They all have like their their distinct personalities. Um, Sushi is like my cat, uh, mm -hmm. which it's funny. Like they're all um, our cats, me and my husband, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, but Sushi is like attached to me at the hip. Isa stays perched on top of the kitchen the entire day, just looking, just staring daggers at everybody. Um, Jack Jack is kind of like our like our problem child. Like he likes to bite his own tail and inflict pain upon himself if he doesn't get enough attention. So we're always like worried about Jack. Mm -hmm. And Binks Binks is um little Binksy cat. He he kind of just hides and he'll come out randomly and give you attention. So it's always a treat when he comes out. Mm -hmm. And then Willet is just surviving. <laughs> She's our dog <laughs> and she just is just trying to not get in the cat's way. <laughs> I've always wondered like, do the pets have those personalities when they come out or do they develop those personalities because of the other pets? I, you know what, that's a good question, but I think it's kind of like, I'm not saying like animals or people or anything, but it's like us, like we, our personalities are shaped so much about like the environment that we're in and whatnot. Um, I do think that Willet, our dog, is a lot gentler and a lot more submissive to other dogs because she grew up in a house of cats. Because mm -hmm. like cats let her know right away, like, no, 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 like we run the roost. Mm -hmm. And so she, even when she plays with a dog, she immediately submits to them. And I think it's because of the cats. That she yeah. does that. <laughs> that makes sense. Did you did you have any pets growing up? I we always had pets. Like my dad loved to have like a house full of animals and bless it. Like he was always gone, so it was my mom having to take care of them all the time. But mm -hmm. um I think at most we had four dogs, a bird, and a ferret. Like we gave up on fish a long time ago because we they would always end up dead. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah, we but we've always we've always been very attached to dogs. It wasn't until I was an adult that I really got like into cats. I finally understood like what the fuss was about with cats. Uh -huh. But yeah, always always a house full of animals. Did your did your dad ever do the thing where he returned from the road with a dog and then like left it and then went back on the road? <laughs> oh thank God no. no. Thank God it was always like a family decision. And okay. usually it was brought brought on by like my sister and I okay. wanting the cat and the dog. And my dad was just a sucker. Like he wanted us to be happy. So uh, he always said yes. <laughs> that makes sense. And did you, and your mom was okay with it? I mean, as okay as she could be, but like that, that was the thing is like, she has such a big heart and she loves animals too, that it wasn't too hard to convince her and whatnot. Um, like right now she actually has two dogs that she is like super in love with. If you follow her Instagram, you will see a lot of peanut. Mm -hmm. Peanut is her obsession and that is like her dog. Like they're just attached at the hip. So it's not too hard to convince my mom to get, get another animal. <laughs> Do you sometimes feel like, um, and not just about your mom, but about most parents, that when after they have kids and the kids get too old, the pets kind of replace the kids? And, like, oh my they, God, yeah. They do all the things that they would have done, but like to the very small children, you know, to you as a yes. baby and a kid, yeah, that becomes the pet. Absolutely, absolutely. Even then, like, I feel like my sister and I kind of get jealous of Peanut even now as adults. We're like... <laughs> Like, did you cuddle us that much? Like, I don't remember that. And then probably my mom's rebuttal would have been something like, well, I don't think you let me cuddle you that much on the regular. That's fair. But uh, I, do, I do agree. I think, like, like, she really does treat them like her children. Like, I mean, half the time they eat better than they do. She spoils <laughs> the dogs. Really? That much? Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. She spoils them so much, but like, and I think like down the line, like way, way, way down the line, like my mom is still a young feisty mamacita. She's still doing her thing. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, I think when she retires, she's going to have just a house full of dogs or she's going to have some kind of like rescue mission kind of thing. But I I think she she would. Does she ever retire? She keeps coming back. (laughs) <laughs> I mean it's hard I mean she I loves what she does so much like she she loves what she does she's still kicking ass at it I mean we see her on AEW tearing it up with Nyla Rose and so um I mean I think she could she could keep going I mean that's the beauty of managing like you don't take as much bumps so you have a longer longevity <laughs> right true you were recently on AEW because you did the announcing for the women's so yeah. what I want to talk about is how how do you make the transition I mean I know you still perform and wrestle but how do you make the transition to a ring announcer like how do you know you're good at that okay well like um a lot of people don't know this but back when I was training under WWE back in like the category of FCW before Mm. it turned into like performance center NXT um when you were training to wrestle usually you were not good (laughs) like at (laughs) all at first and so they were like well we need to like you're going to the shows all the time so they would teach you how to ring announce right off the bat Mm -hmm. that way you know you can at least like be a part of the show get how the flow goes and be watching the matches and you know just be more of an active participant in the show rather than just sitting in the back like watching so um they taught me how to ring announce right off the bat and I remember all the girls were like don't be good at it don't be good at it because then you're they're going to keep you as a ring announcer and then it'll like hold you back from like getting to have as much ring time as you want as a wrestler. And I remember thinking that, but I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I remember they, they were like, oh, you're really good. So they actually did keep me in the mm-hmm. announcer role for quite a bit mm-hmm. um, during FCW live events and stuff like that. And even like on FCW when it was broadcast on Bright House Networks. But um. But yeah, so I always knew how to do it, but like my big professional transition didn't really happen until David McLean happened to see me at Lucha Underground announcing mm-hmm. um, right after me and Chavito happened to put the beat down on Famous B. Mm-hmm. But um, he happened to be there and I didn't know that he was about to launch WOW, Women of Wrestling. Mm-hmm. And it just happened to be like, I want her to mm-hmm. announce. And that's just kind of how that segued into my professional announcing career. So yeah. I want, I want to go back to the announcing thing, but I really yeah. miss Lucha Underground. Oh, I know. I was so sad. I was <laughs> so sad that that ended because I was like so fired up. I'm like, this is amazing. And mm-hmm. then like literally it like that was the last season. So I got in right at the last minute, but I know. It's I sad. mean, if, if we want to be uh, kind of technical about it, I feel like Lucha Underground was the predecessor to what they do now because of COVID. I mean, well, the, that, the matches, yeah. the epic matches and things like that, you know. I agree. And it was just so much more cinematic as well. Yes. Like they were adding so much more of those touches. Whereas now that's like a regular thing, which is awesome. It's really mm-hmm. cool. But I think Lucha Underground really... Uh, did I agree with you? It segued into kind of how we're wrestling now and how the product is is um, portrayed now. Yeah. So definitely. I also like the in between matches thing, where I'm I'm just like as a wrestling fan who's been watching forever, I'm so tired of the uh, let's go to backstage. Here's someone okay. holding a microphone and they're talking to someone. It just gets kind of old, and there's only so much you can do with it. You know? Yes. I agree. I agree. And like, I, I mean, I do love um, interviewing backstage as well, like as an interviewer and like, mm-hmm. and doing them is really fun, but I 100% agree if we can do more, like, like almost like a movie. Like I love that it felt like a movie um, yeah. with, you know, the matches being, you know, how we solve our problems or escalate them. Mm-hmm. So uh, I agree. I hope like, I hope I can be a part of a product one day um, as a wrestler to where I can be able to partake in those kind of behind the scenes, not behind the scenes kind of situations. <laughs> um, so back to the ring announcing, have you ever kind of practiced like a catchphrase or, you know, something that you would like, you know, not a catchphrase, but like, you know, like every, uh, most ring announcers, like the buffers, they have their own thing that you know that the buffers oh, yeah. are announcing. So do you, is there something you would do kind of like... You know what, like, I feel like because I was trained, like, just so, like, not robotically, but just, like, how to do it, like, Mm -hmm. like, the WWE way, I feel like that's always kind of stayed with me, Mm -hmm. and when I went to AEW, Justin Roberts was, like, a huge help to me, and, like, he's a freaking 
you know, announcer legend and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And he was actually like, actually, we encourage you to kind of put your spin on it here. And I was like, um, I was like, <laughs> I'm not used to that. Like that yeah. actually made me way more nervous. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God. And so, um, but no, I feel like he did. I don't necessarily have something I say that is, um, that is like necessarily me, but I have like, like more of a raspy kind of voice. And like, I have a lot of like, I don't know, like ganas, like when I, when I do announce. And so I feel like that's kind of what my staple is. And also like just being like this tattooed badass in the ring, I'm trying to like, not, I guess, um, like look like your normal announcer. So, but yeah, it's more about like the way I do it rather than the things I say. Gotcha. Did you ever kind of pitch the idea of like maybe you are the ring announcer and it works into an angle where someone kind of messes with you and Oh my god, I've been praying for that for the longest <laughs> time. I don't even know. Like I think we did it on like a live event one time uh -huh. and um and it was fun. I'm I'm hoping like I mean I would love to do that with WoW when it comes back because like it's known like I am the ring announcer there. Mm -hmm. And I have like the the honor and privilege of getting that title there and so but i i want to wrestle like so bad right and so i think like that would be a wonderful anger um uh, angle to go with cough cough david mclean so <laughs> <laughs> do, do you when do you think uh if ever when do you think the feeling of not wanting to wrestle will ever leave you oh my god i don't think it will because <laughs> i keep <laughs> like i took like a six-year hiatus from wrestling um right. for like a for like numerous reasons besides like my neck being all like like just cricked up from like years of you know abuse to it but um but like I mean it's crazy because like I've had the urge and then I was like and then I happened to have like another health issue pop up so I was like okay like that's it we're done wrestling like let's just try and move on and then I go to AEW and I literally like nothing magical happened besides watching um, watching the women roll around and I was like, mm -hmm. Oh God, damn. like, mm -hmm. I was like, I want to get in there again. And I did. Mm -hmm. And I like by the, um, they were very gracious. Um, Dustin Rhodes was gracious enough to let me roll around with the girls a little bit. Mm -hmm. And my body felt great. I felt awesome. I felt like, man, maybe I can give this another go. I'm going to turn 30 next month. And I'm like, this is the time. And like, now I'm actually like training on the regular. I'm open for bookings now. And so hopefully I can have another real run at it before I'm like done. But I don't think it will ever leave me, honestly. When did you first start training? I started training in 2010. Okay. So um, that was back when I was at FCW for like three years straight, like training, training, training. And that training schedule was rigorous. Like we were, you trained like, you trained five days a week, um, which like, that's a lot of bumping because mm -hmm. it's like a three hour bump session. And yeah. then one of the days is promo day, which we had with um, the wonderful Dusty Rhodes. And then, um, and then the next two days or like, depending on our schedule, we were working shows. Mm -hmm. So you did not stop. And I had that for three years, which kind of ran out my bump card for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of took a break. And then, yeah, now I am training in, but not nearly as rigorously in because I'm trying to preserve my body and I want to feel good. I want to feel strong and good, not worn out and just banged up before I go into a match. Hopefully. Do you, so. do you, do you remember like one specific thing that Dusty said about promos that you kind of carry <sighs> with you? You know what? Like, it's funny because like I I remember this because Dustin said something um, the other day and it like totally brought back like what his dad would would say. It was just about like, I mean, the most important thing is your storytelling, you're suspending reality. Mm -hmm. And like he would always tell us to watch movies like Dusty, uh, Dusty Rhodes was always just like, what, what, where's your inspiration? Mm -hmm. And like, but like Dusty, this is obviously not hard to believe, like took a lot of inspiration from from westerns and yeah, whatnot so. shocking <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like i remember when i was learning how to do a promo like of course i sucked at first but like eventually i did get good because he was like he's like keep drawing inspiration keep going and he was so great because he like was one of the trainers that would understand like i need to build her up and make her feel like a star that way she exudes mm -hmm. what we want Mm -hmm. And so, um, he always did that, but like, I took a lot of inspiration from all of the characters I got to play at FCW from movies and like that, it still helps me to this day. 
do you feel a little bit more pressure on you because you were second gen well third generation third fourth generation what generation are we <laughs> i'm third i'm third generation third. i mean there's been so many guerreros that i can't even remember i'm like wait yeah that's how we want it <laughs> yeah, i'm like i'm like who's cousins who's her brothers okay <laughs> so you're we're third. taking over man no but even still <laughs> We're, we're confusing because people think um, Chavo, uh, Chavo Jr. or Chavito, as I call him, they're like, how's your uncle? And I'm like, he's my cousin. Actually. He's your cousin. Yeah. My cousin. Yeah. But like, even then, like we, even sometimes like, it's like uncle, like I still, like I see him more as an uncle because he's older than me than a cousin. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's confusing. Um, but I'm sorry, your question is, is there, do I feel pressure? What was there pressure going into it? Like, not just with wrestling, but with everything. Like, I mean, oh you, you come from a legendary wrestling family. I mean, I do. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm very blessed. I feel very yes. blessed. That's like for right out the gate. Like I'm mm. extremely thankful because it has opened up every opportunity for me because I'm a Guerrero and I understand mm. that. But because those doors open for me, because I'm a Guerrero, there is a mm -hmm. lot of expectation like, oh, she's just naturally going to have it. Mm -hmm. And I think I will give myself this, like I did naturally have a charisma. I did naturally love to be talking to people and like the promo, I'm, I'm, it's more of a natural thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I did feel pressure because my mom is so good on mm -hmm. the mic and my dad like as we found out later in his career is really good on the mic as well mm -hmm. and so um there was a lot of pressure right out the gate with that um but with the wrestling absolutely i feel i still feel the pressure i have to put that pressure i put on myself and that other people put on me mm -hmm. in the way back of my mind because it it stunts me honestly like all that pressure it doesn't leave room for the fun of wrestling and for wanting me to grow and whatnot. It's just like, sometimes it could be so much pressure that it's stifling. So I kind of have to put that on the back burner. That's what I'm learning this time around with coming back and wrestling is like, we're gonna focus on having fun and I'm gonna pay homage to my dad absolutely whenever I wrestle, but it's gonna be about how I wanna do it this time. So. I, th I think sometimes that comes with age, like the eventually you just stop giving a shit and you're just like, whatever, I'm just gonna do what I want because I, I don't know why like people assume that when you're younger you have less pre with anything like you have less pressure like when you're 20s you don't really give a shit but you put a lot of pressure on yourself because of the outside world and what yeah. people are going to think and everything like that and then as you get older like myself I'm 43 mm -hmm. I don't give a shit what people think yes. <laughs> now it took a while <laughs> like it took a long time for that like I don't and yeah I feel like it's even harder when you're in a profession where people are constantly watching you and you have a famous family that there's just a lot of pressure on you. So it's good that you're kind of like having fun now at a younger yeah. age. You know, you're still young, not that you're old, but you're still young. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I like, I believe me, I'm still trying to get to that point where like, like the fucks given are way less. And I mm. still, and, and it's like, and I want people to understand, like, it's not that I'm saying I don't care. It's like, my problem is I care too much as a baseline. Mm -hmm. So I have to like actively try and like push all of that aside. That way I can like leave room for fun. And I notice like the less I like, the less pressure I put on myself, the better I perform. Mm -hmm. And so um, I absolutely uh, feel you on that. I'm like really trying to give less of a fuck. I wish I could go back to baby shawl when she was 19 and starting FCW and being like, stop caring as much. Um, but it was also hard because it was like, it was very adamant every single day of like, your dad did it this way. Like, this is like, this is how we need you to do it. And like, I mean, like a, a month in when they were like, what's your wrestling name? And I was like, well, I was giving them like name Guerrero. And they were like, no, 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 you can't use Guerrero. And I was like, why? I was like, I thought that was like half the reason you guys wanted me here. And they were like, well, we just have to make sure you're not going to like shit the bed. Um, and I was like, oh, pressure. <laughs> and so um, it was a lot. It was a lot for a little 19 year old, like being thrust into this professional like world and whatnot, especially like even growing up, there was a lot of pressure as a kid, mm -hmm. like to be good backstage. Like my, I remember my father one time said, do not breathe don't talk, don't do anything unless someone like is actively talking to you. And I remember as a little kid, like, okay, <laughs> not understanding. Like I was walking into this, like just this crazy world. So yeah, it's been, it's taken a long time for me to try and have fun and just be myself 
in the business. So I'm finally doing it now though. That's, that's good to hear. What, what was uh, life growing up like regular life, home life, like being a Guerrero, like in school, like, was that a good thing? Was that a bad thing? Like, how did that go? Honestly, like my dad um, really hammered into us to be humble. And I feel like anybody that knew my father personally, like would tell you he was like the humblest guy ever. Mm -hmm. um, and so he really, that was like the first thing he taught us. And I feel like I tried to not talk about it mm -hmm. that much. Like I never like, like led with it in school or anything um, because that was just kind of how my dad taught us until unless people asked then of course I'd be like yeah mm -hmm. um but like I was kind of a shy kid mm -hmm. like I, I didn't really try and seek the spotlight in that way in high school like I had kind of like people kind of talk bad about me like oh like oh she thinks she's so cool because like of her father or whatever when I was just like no I'm just quiet like I just mm -hmm. I just don't, I don't know. I kind of kept to myself and whatnot. I was daydreaming half the time. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, it wasn't anything like we did have like a nice house and whatnot while we could, but it was also like, we also had a really hard home life. Like it's obviously no secret. Like my dad battled with drugs and alcohol and mm -hmm. my mom was trying to keep us together. It was a very tumultuous household. And so I think that was another reason why I like didn't want to talk about it. Cause I was just like, I'm just trying to get through, like, I'm just trying to get through this right now. So I, I, I kind of, I, I know like the, I know wrestlers aren't the same home as they are on, you know, in their persona oh, and stuff no. like that. But I, I thought it was funny that your dad, your dad hammered home to you to be humble. And he was literally lie, cheat, steal. And like, yeah. <laughs> that was part, and it's just funny to hear that. It's just, Oh, he you know, loved it. Yeah. He, he really was an, um, like, opposite of what you saw on tv like right. he he was like me like very shy like he yeah. like didn't really um unless he was comfortable with you and when that like he like something happened when the red light turned on like mm -hmm. and he was a completely different person mm -hmm. um i will say though like um my god what what was it? i think it was very much with the ray mysterio dominic angle mm -hmm. um when my dad was really angry like on the mic and the way he would like scream and stuff like that mm -hmm. that we saw that at home <laughs> like when, home. when we messed up and it was like scary it's like it's like i was like Ugh. like I, it still gives me chills like i still can't watch it because i'm like oh no i remember it like it's too close to home too close <laughs> do you ever are you uh does the real shawl ever come out on screen like you, you know, know what like, like would, um would your husband say when you're pissed off at home that you come out on screen oh yeah i feel like <laughs> That was something else that like Dusty would would talk to us about was like with whatever promo we're doing, like there there is an element of truth in there and you need to feed off that. And I think because I think the reason why I was so good at a promo was because I had a lot of anger mm -hmm. and sadness to feed off of and to bring out and mm -hmm. to like channel into a promo. Mm -hmm. Um and so I think like hopefully he'll I'll be able to show more about myself this time around. Cause I'm coming, I'm coming back to wrestling as Shaw Guerrero. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the ultra diva. I'm not going to be hiding behind like a big gimmick anymore. I'm really going to just be a turned up version of my personality. So hopefully people like it. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think you just wrote your first promo. <gasps> You're coming back to wrestling as Shaw Guerrero. You're not those other things that you were anymore. Yeah, it's like, and I'm, I will always be Eddie's daughter, but that's yeah. not the only thing. I think people like, like, yeah, that's who she is. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, no, 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 no. Like, I am my own person. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people had a hard time, I think, with my burlesque and with what I do. Um, like, I, I'm a part of the Vaudettes and uh, we, uh, that's the dance troupe I'm in. And right. when we were on Jericho Cruise, and we were doing our like our big long set and it's like the super sexy show they were like oh my god like are you allowed to do that and i'm like y yes <laughs> <laughs> like i am my own person and whatnot and so i think i'm just excited to show the wrestling community like just who i am as a person so is there a yeah. different is there a difference in like getting yourself hyped up for that type of show as opposed to wrestling like 
oh my god like wrestling makes me so much more nervous than dancing <laughs> okay it makes well. me so much more nervous um but like no honestly i think it's the it's the same kind of prep it's a mm. lot of um i mean i stretch a lot more before i before i dance than necessarily when i wrestle um but like and and it's it's just so different because like it's different and it's the same a lot of ways because wrestling is very much like you and your opponent working together to create, to suspend this reality and whatnot. Um, it's a little bit different with the VODs because it's like five to 10 other people like working together and having all of this um, cohesiveness. Um, there's a lot more prep time with VODs because God for Jericho Cruz, we prepped for three months like with long like four hour rehearsals kind of thing with whereas a match you just got to depend on you know like your skill and you you make your match like the night before or like the the day of a lot of the time and you just pray to god yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that's probably why it makes me more nervous because with wads at least i can like prepare and how i perform is completely based on how much i prepare myself with wrestling you, you kind of have to pray to the wrestling gods a little bit Mm -hmm. and, and hope that you're in good enough shape and that you and your opponent have this um like vibe together so Wh which involves more injury Ooh, ooh, good question <laughs> um <laughs> it's so weird it's so weird because like i think i think wrestling obviously mm -hmm. because there's so much more of a danger right. um although like it's so funny like i did a like a year and a half ago, I did a workshop with Little Miss Nasty. If you don't know them, they're like this kick-ass group in um, in California that does something similar to what the Vaudettes do. Mm -hmm. And we did we did a we did a workshop and whatnot. And like the next day, I was feeling really sore and like I coughed and my whole back went out. Oh. And like, and this was like in the middle of the night and my husband had to rush me to the hospital because I couldn't move and I was like in so much pain and whatnot and i was just like i think that's because of wrestling for so long and all my neck injuries in mm -hmm. the past so it's it's hard like i also had the same thing happen to me like a couple of years back when i was doing like a body slam drill granted it was like i was like 10 body slams in like taking mm -hmm. 10 body slams in before that happened mm -hmm. so um it's hard it's hard to tell just isn't like that, isn't that the worst like you can go through all you can go through dancing you can go through wrestling training and then you like cough at home and you're like oh god oh it's so true like i feel like everybody talks about that in wrestling like like oh how'd you get hurt i was getting in the car <laughs> like i bent over like <laughs> well, literally like something like that <laughs> i'll make you feel better about that a doctor once told me that most injuries you injured it previously but what you did kind of like sparked it to hurt at that moment so yeah. you hurt your neck and your back at a different time but getting out of the car was the movement that made it go okay now it's screwed so it's yes like injuries like kind of happen before you actually feel the pain well, like I think about, I don't know if you watched Glow on Netflix. I absolutely, they did such a good job with that show. But like, I think in the last season, like we see, um, I think her wrestling character is Welfare King, um, Queen, but we saw Awesome Kong, mm -hmm. like have the whole thing where like her back was like hurting, 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 hurting. And like, she was having a harder, harder time like coping. And then she sneezed mm -hmm. and it was like, oh God. Yeah. And that's yeah. literally how it happens. That's literally how it happens. You're in yeah. pain and then all of a sudden, like, uh yeah you sneeze or something and it's like downhill from there yeah that's that's the crazy part i mean and with anything it's not just wrestling like it's working out it's running no. i'm a runner and like sometimes i'll mm -hmm. run and then like the next day i'll like go grab a sneaker and i'll just get like a shooting pain up my leg or <gasps> yeah something. yeah i, I mean you're a badass for running i've never been a good runner i'm like this hurts <laughs> why it's well uh a lot of it is mental Okay. A lot of it is mental. Like you have to kind of like zone out a little bit. Okay. I'm sure that's the same with wrestling too. Like you can't concentrate on people slamming you 10 times. No, I think like there is like, you have to kind of like willfully black out a little bit. Like when you're, when you know the big bump is coming, like you have to not think about it. And I think like toward the end of my wrestling career, um, when I was at NXT and stuff like that, I think I was in like so much neck pain and stuff like that. I was anticipating everything so much and I was 
like scared because I was in so much pain to take bumps that like I wasn't wrestling really well because I was like oh, oh, anticipating the bumps and then I would bump crappy mm -hmm. and then it would make it worse and so like now I have to be like just do it like <laughs> I have to like try and not think about it and be like just go and actually my wrestling has gotten better with like like thinking like being smart and like mm -hmm. knowing what you got to do but like trying to not think not actively think about it mm -hmm. well um for pain management, uh, do you ever use any of your witchcraft? <laughs> <laughs> um, with witchcraft, I feel like I um, I really try and not use any spell work unless it is absolutely necessary. Okay. Um, I'm not Let's a big spell this. person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, like, just like with anything, I feel like if you have the capacity to solve a problem yourself, mm -hmm. then do it. Um, I do believe, I feel like, let I could I can get kind of technical here. I think with pain management, the most pain that I deal with is more of like my mental health and okay. um and whatnot. So I feel like and it's not necessarily witchcraft. I feel like um like what I'm doing, it's like more of a spiritual path and like mm -hmm. meditation, which okay. is a big staple in witchcraft and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um like manifesting what you want in life. I think is more of what I do. And so like, if I'm going to manifest a good day for myself, mm -hmm. it's like, how are you going to do that? And it's like making sure you meditate, making sure you drink a lot of water, making sure like mm -hmm. you do A, B, C, D, E that way the rest of the alphabet works out well for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and whatnot, but I try not to, I try not to bend the universe to my will too much because then that's when, that's when little witches get into trouble. <laughs> Can you think of the last thing that you thought about that, like you brought, you feel like you brought to fruition? Honestly, I feel like it's crazy because when pandemic hit, and I feel like a lot of us can understand this and we've all been stressed out and wondering what the hell life is right now. I was manifesting like, I'm gonna get a job. I'm gonna get a job. And I don't know what it is, but like I wanted to be happy and like, and actually a couple things happened when I was manifesting that for myself. I actually got like a retail job offer that was like really high paying. And like, I was like, I looked into it and I realized like that wasn't what I was looking for mm -hmm. and it wasn't going to make me happy. And then literally like a week later, um, Brandy Rhodes reached out and was like, Hey, we're going to have this women's tournament. Would you happen to want to announce? And I was like, hell yes. <laughs> so I feel like that was the last thing I like, willed into the universe of like, I need this. We need this. My family needs this. And like, but I feel like I also manifested that for myself because I was busting my ass here at home trying to make ends meet. Like I'm also a bartender. Like I, like I have to do what I have to do and like serving food to be able to, you know, keep us afloat. So I feel like the universe saw like, yeah, she's doing the footwork. Let's mm -hmm. give her some. And then AEW happened. Do you feel like sometimes, I, I feel this way all the time, do you feel like sometimes the universe kind of like throws us things to kind of throw us off track? Like the retail job, let's say you took it. And right. then like a week into it, Brandy still calls you. Mm -hmm. And you've already said yes to this other thing. And so right. it really makes you decide. Like sometimes I feel like we get screwed with. Just to say, like, I don't know. I'm big well, into yeah. that. <laughs> Life would be so much less interesting if we didn't get screwed with. And I have, I've always said, I feel like God has to have a sense of humor. Mm. Like whatever this higher power is, it has mm. a sense of humor. Mm. Um, and so I do, yeah, I do believe it. And I feel like that's when we have our gut feeling mm. um, kind of help us out. And even then I feel like I've always, like I have a very strong intuition, but mm. then I also have like, I'm an overthinker. Mm -hmm. as well so that is always in constant battle and so that's why I love to read tarot because I feel like tarot helps me kind of like sort through um what I I guess my own thoughts and emotions and whatnot so like yeah like all like the witchcraft it always sounds so scary people are like oh she's a witch it's like honestly okay. no I'm just using these tools that happen to speak to me to like be able to sort through this dumpster fire of, <laughs> of what like life is right now yeah so but yeah i do i do agree um life is there for um like yeah to mess with you a little bit but it's but that's what builds character and that's what like how you end up trusting yourself so
the, yeah. the witch the witchcraft word does get a bad connotation but i always oh, say yeah. like first of all uh witchcraft is no different than any religion or anything like that <laughs> like so <laughs> but i always say like whatever gets a person through the day go for it yeah like, i'm not gonna judge if that's that's your thing this is my thing yeah like it's you like I mean, yeah go ahead again oh no i was about to say it was just like like cardinal rule i'm like don't be an asshole and mm. i'm like and just like like if you're not hurting anybody and you're not hurting yourself like right. do you do yeah. you whatever that is i also can't judge too because i can't be like oh tarot cards that's kind of weird well i'm gonna go run 10 miles now <laughs> like, <laughs> that's that would be super that would be super judgy of me <laughs> <laughs> To say, oh my God, you run 10 miles though. Can you do like a 10 mile stretch? The, uh, well, I ran a half marathon. That's 13. The longest I've run is 15. Oh my God. And friends wow. are trying to convince me. I actually have another podcast that's about running. And oh, wow. Okay. I have to yeah, check that out. Yeah. And half the time it's my co-host convincing me to try to run a marathon. Oh God. But there's just something in my head that's going, I don't, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> It well, just, like you have to train so long for that too. Like I can imagine the prep work, like that goes yeah. into that. I mean, it's like running every day. Like most days are like three miles, four miles, but you have to do those longer runs on the, on the weekends. And right. for me, it's not even about the physical. It's about the, the boredom of it. Like the 26 mile, like what, are, what is my brain going to say to myself at like mile seven? <laughs> when I want to stop and I'm like yeah you're but terrified I hear in dialogue <laughs> yeah. so well like I feel like running is almost meditative like the way you talk about it though because you said like you kind of have to zone out like you have to be in like this like this frame of mind right in order to be able to run those long I mean god four miles sounds terrible but <laughs> for you it's a piece of cake <laughs> it's meditative when there's not something on the line okay you know like that makes sense with the pressure of running a marathon, you're at a public thing where you want to finish and you've told people for the last month and a half that you're running a marathon. Yeah. You know, th there's, there's a joke, you know, the hardest thing about running a marathon? What? It's working it into every conversation that you did. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like that. <laughs> yeah. So there's like the, the talking about it. So you got like, and then people got to ask, you know, like, Oh, how'd you do on that? Marathon? You know what I mean? So um, it just gets, yep. Uh, there's the pressure. Oh my gosh. If, if I had to go out there and do it, I probably could. But I'm sure you could too. I'm sure you would like find it deep within you and whatnot. But yeah, I'm sure like you want to, if you are going to run a marathon, you want to make sure you're a hundred percent like, yeah. yes, I'm going to do this. Not like, I don't know. In the, <laughs> it's just like, it's just like wrestling. Like you can't walk into the ring and go, ah, I'm probably just going to half-ass this. <laughs> Literally. No, I was actually, so I had like, I, I'm training with my husband right now. And so he, he's been graciously like, like kicking my ass for me. And, mm -hmm. um, like I happened to walk into the ring the other day, like I was feeling really down on myself. I was feeling like not good enough. Like all of like the old pressure that I would walk into training with, um, like six years ago, I walked into practice like that. And mm -hmm. I like shit the bed the first half <laughs> the first hour I was bumping wrong I was mm -hmm. like everything felt like shit and I was just like oh my god and then he had like snapped me out of it and it was just like it's okay you can't have this frame of mind like literally you cannot do that mm -hmm. and then like literally once I changed it over I was like oh, okay and then like we we ran a spot and it felt great and so it's just like it's crazy how mental it is like you can't walk in there exactly like half wanting to half ass it or even like feeling bad about yourself because it, it completely changes your workout. Yeah. You can't half ass. There's really nothing in life you can half ass. No. <laughs> or it's like, why, why would you want to? Cause it's like, it's not even worth it in the first place. Right. Cause then you're just, you're going to feel like, like you're going to feel like half empty once it's over. So you're like, why did I even waste my time? Exactly. Well, yeah. before, before I let you go, let's talk about your Twitch real quick. Why don't you go ahead and plug it? Yeah. So, um, my Twitch is literally super simple. It's mm -hmm. Shaw Guerrero. Mm -hmm. So, um, come check it out. Um, I'm playing kingdom hearts I'm playing animal crossing. And then on my husband's Twitch channel, which is mm -hmm. drama King Matt, we are in the middle of marriage melee. Okay. Um, we are on the third heat. We are tied currently. And whoever loses this heat is going to have to endure some terrible punishment. Is, so, is but we do punishments every single week. So it's really fun to watch. <laughs> is, that, is that good for a marriage or bad for a marriage? 
You know what? It's actually been very, very stimulating for us. Okay. We've been stuck in the house. Uh -huh. together for the past five months uh, uh -huh. this has been a good um outlet for us <laughs> okay any shit talking going on in between oh my god mad shit mad <laughs> shit talking. oh yeah like i think one of the punishments i got to do to him the other day i've been on a roll lately i i've been taking the win the past like four weeks mm -hmm. um i got to chop him mm -hmm. which was quite cathartic and then uh i like what i had we had like a tickle challenge he hates being tickled so i got to like tickle him for like mm -hmm. an extended period of time oh. so uh, it's been fun i've also ate cinnamon and like a lot of disgusting things on the twitch channel too so come Wait, check uh, it out as a because of a loss or just for fun Oh yeah, because when you lose, you have to do a punishment. And usually all of our followers, they choose the punishment for us. Oh God. So it's you, can't leave, fun. you can't leave it up to them. Oh God. <laughs> oh, well, we give them an option. We're like, it's either this or this. Don't get too creative. Okay. Because believe me, people have wanted him to shave his beard. And then they yeah. like, oh my God, like it's, um, it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully I'll keep the winning streak going. Well, cool. I, I wish you the best of luck on Twitch. I wish you the best of luck with, uh, you know, when everyone gets back to performing, you get to perform again uh, somewhere. And uh, same for you. Good, good luck with the Vaudettes and everything. And hopefully this year I get to be, I get, I got invited two years ago to go on the Jericho cruise. I couldn't. And then, no! this, yeah, this year they didn't have it. So I'm hoping by it next year. October. Yeah. Right. So I'm hoping maybe by maybe this year. I could do it, but I'll find out. Please soon. come. The Vaudettes are actually coming back to Jericho Cruise. We're actually uh, booked again. So cool. we, we got to come hang out. Yeah, awesome. for sure. Definitely. Well, Shaw, <laughs> thank you so much. I had a great time. Oh my God, thank you. This was really fun. Cool. And that brings another episode of Not About Wrestling to a close. Guests of the Not About Wrestling show stay in their own damn houses. If you like the show, please share it on social or leave a review on iTunes. And remember to subscribe to Not About Wrestling on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com backslash brobible and find the Not About Wrestling section. Thanks again for listening or watching, and see you all next week. Well, I won't, I won't see you at all. You know what I mean. <laughs>